Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we solve problems that don't yet exist. Today, I'm going to show you how to build the Prowler fighter jet. This is a space aircraft and can be used in an atmospheric condition. Of course, we're going to go ahead and build it on top of the hover carrier. What better place than a hover carrier to not only build this fighter, but also transport it to the next location. First, just got to move this one out of the way. What's unique about this fighter is it actually has folding wingtips. It's similar to, say, the F-18 Hornet, if you've ever seen that fighter. That is typically used on Navy carriers. Fortunately, though, this has a little bit better control and we have a vertical lift. I'm just going to sit it down here. That should do. To build this, I've already set up a standard rotor with a small attached head and an arm projecting outward. And I've calibrated the projector to be in basically the right position to build this prowler without being in the way of anything else. And we can easily just touch down or move it slightly so we can park it. I'm going to start off by two blocks up on this arm until you can see that you can start welding these other blocks in from the projector. Of course, I'm going to skip a lot of this. Like so. And now that we have it done, we just disconnect the arm. It should sit here and levitate for a while. If you're in survival mode, I definitely recommend staying away from those flames. They will eventually hurt you. Let's move this a little bit farther forward, giving us enough space. And for the most part, it's complete except for the wingtips are missing and the gear is missing. Pretty much anything connected to a hinge that's on a projector usually doesn't project. For the wingtip, I'm just using this 2x1 slanted block. And then I'm going to use these half raised blocks. Along with triangular blocks on the corner. When you're going forward with this, you only need two blocks forward. And then we're going to go six blocks up. Or you should have six blocks attached in a row. We'll count them in a minute. Might take a moment to try to line this up correctly, but it is possible. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And six is as high as you want to go before you put the very tip of the wing tip on there. Change this to blue. Let me see if I can get this lined up here. There we go. And then we're going to proceed with the next block back to white. These wind tips are fairly easy to put together, and they don't look too bad if you ask me. We only need one of these blocks going downward. Mm, that doesn't look right. There, that's better. And then we'll put these half square blocks to fill in the rest of the area. And that should do it for this wingtip. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side.
getting this lined up correctly the first time is usually a pain unless you're facing the right direction. There we go. And that should do it. That's the left side. I think the last part is just simply putting this gear on. And then we'll be able to test it out. I'm raising this one so we can see exactly how the gear goes for the next one. It's always good to have an additional one available to compare to. Looks like we just have a hinge. Okay, so we have one block coming down off of the main gear here. And I think it's two blocks. Yep, two blocks on the nose gear here. Another thing to note is if you're going to use rotors, they're really just for a look. They don't necessarily function as very good gear. Then when you put them on, definitely make sure to label each one as you put it on so you don't confuse which ones are which. We're just going to call this the nose gear wheel rotor. And nothing's fancy set up on here. Everything's pretty much standard. For the left main, let's see, we are going to have one rotor that's pointing downward. And this rotor is going to be set so we can rotate 90 degrees to fold this gear up. So we'll call this the left gear directional rotor. With the left gear directional rotor, now we're going to put the left wheel rotor on. And it'll give us a sense of direction when we go to operate the directional rotor. It'll show us if we're pointed the right direction or not. We want these gears to spin back inward towards the body instead of outward. To do this, I did put a remote on this design so we can easily access the terminal and then adjust as we're watching it. The directional rotors are going to be the opposite direction on each side of the ship itself. I set the velocity to 2.5, lower limit to negative 90, and the upper limit to zero. And as you can see, it rotated back towards the body of the ship. Okay, now for the right side. It's important to have these rotors also at a zero degree facing forward. This way, it's going to make it a lot easier determining which direction it's going to rotate the gear. So this is the right gear directional rotor. And we're going to set this the exact opposite. So the lower limit is zero. The upper limit is 90. And we'll set the velocity to 2.5. If we hit the reverse, you can see it went all the way to 90 and then back again. I know I didn't put the lower rotor on here with the wheels, but we know from the other side that we needed to reverse the direction of this rotor anyways.
And that's about it for those gear. You can see it's coming along, pointed back towards the body of the ship, and matches the other side. On here, we just need to regroup these controls and make sure that this gear isn't going to hit the body when we retract it. So let's try retracting them first. We set the velocity to negative five. Lower limit is zero and upper limit is 90 for these hinges. And as you can see, they go directly up to the lower part of the wing and then they stop. Nose gear hinge also should do the same. Oh, doesn't appear that we put wheels on this one. There we go. Okay, so originally I had these set up with a gear control grouping. But since we had to recreate certain things, of course this grouping is incorrect. So we need to remove that grouping and recreate it basically. So we'll go ahead and delete this gear control. And we want to label it the exact same way because later on we're using a timer block to activate it. So we have the left gear system, the right gear systems, and the nose. And these are the gear controls. So you want the directional rotors and the hinges all combined together. And these we probably need to reverse first so they're pointing in the right direction. Otherwise, if we retract it, they'll spin outward instead of inward. Now, let's see if we can set this up. On a G button function. So, the number one button, I had had a timer block. But since we just changed everything, we need to really check this timer block to see if it regrouped. The gear control is on there, but the gear lights are gone. Yeah, totally forgot to put the lights back on this thing. Maybe we should do that first before we run everything else. Looks like these rotors for the directional are moving a little too slow. We may have to adjust those faster. I think on the original model, I had them at five. So let's try it at a five velocity instead of a 2.5. Negative five on here. And this should be a positive five. Let's try this again. Wonderful. They rotate at the exact same speed in which the hinges are retracting. Our wingtips are also working. For the wingtip operation, I set them as the number two on the G screen. Let's just add lights here. These are just basic interior lights. So these interior lights, we're going to group them together, but I forgot what the group was. Better check the timer block. G 
just called gear lights. So we'll group these as just the gear lights. The radius, I'm putting them at five. And I think that should be about it. Since we're out here, I'm going to go ahead and set these wingtip lights as well. On an international FAA standard, the left wingtip is always red and the right wingtip is green or blue. So we'll label this left wingtip. And to set this to red, we just need to completely decrease the blue and the green hue. The radius is going to be five again. And this time we're gonna add a blink to it. I'm just adding a one second blink, which is simulated kind of like a real aircraft or spacecraft. The blink length is 10% and I'm not gonna change that one. Let me hide these so when we do the right side, we don't get confused. And that side on the right is going to be the green. So we'll just label this the right wingtip light. And adjust the red all the way down and the blue all the way down, which gives us that vibrant green. Then a radius of five. Blink interval of one second. And I think that's it. There you have it. So you have all lights now connected. Let's go ahead and test this spacecraft out. As you can see, it's pretty versatile in its controls. Fairly smooth and picks up speed relatively decent. Right at 70 ms, 80 ms, going almost straight vertical. And maybe we should go back down. I don't want to get too far away or it'll take us a while to get back to the hover carrier. It's pretty good at banking. So if you try to avoid obstacles or go around obstacles fairly quick, it's wonderful at it, almost like a real fighter jet. Since we're kind of out in the open, maybe we should test these rocket launchers we have on here. Hmm. Oh, it looked like one went off at that time. Yeah, we're only shooting one at a time. I think we need to adjust that. Sometimes it helps if you just turn on and off the original controls. It will reset both of them. Yep, it selected both of them, so they should both be in the on position at this point. Maybe one of them was off, one was on. Oh, there we go. This thing can fire fairly quickly. So if you're just trying to take out land targets or you're trying to take out another ship and just going to basically zoom past them, you could probably get off five or six rounds before you completely bypass them.
Overall, this is a fairly simple build, but could be used in a lot of different situations if you're just trying to fly in, attack, and take off. Or if you wanted to use it as a defense system for any of the drones trying to fly at your hover carrier. It slows down fairly quick. Pretty good maneuverability. Easy to aim. And you can come right back to the deck of your ship again. Well, maybe. I'm not very good at driving these things. I just like making them. But once you do get it centered, it's a pretty easy touchdown. And if you want to go for the long haul, I suggest before you move the hover carrier to actually park these onto the deck. Well, as always, thanks for watching. And I hope you leave tips and tricks in the comment section to share with the group. I appreciate it.